How many can thank God this morning that he picked you up, that he turned you around, that he placed your feet on solid ground, that he gave you a new name, that he made you a brand new person. The person that you were before you got saved is dead. And the person that becomes alive in Christ is alive, and he's brand spanking new. Isn't that awesome? I just love that. How many are just excited this morning? I think there's just a little bit of a leftover from last night. (sighs) Yeah. Where did Sarah go? Oh, there you are. Hey, come up here for a sec. Yeah. So clearly I didn't plan to do this because I look a fright. I am not even wearing eyebrows. So, but during worship, I really wanted to just hide in the crowd in the darkness and tell you guys, so I'm going to pretend I'm doing that. Um, During worship, God showed me all of us worshiping and our hearts wide open and this, like, most glorious light coming out of us. And there was, I'm going to use this, there was little thin little books like coming out of us like almost like in those alien abduction movies and they were going up to God and I was like what is that like like is that like our story but there's so many and and he was like it's your chapters because sometimes we want to give God some of our chapters and we'll allow him to redeem those things and rewrite those chapters but other things we hold on to other things we're too ashamed of or maybe we don't even realize that we trust God enough to rewrite those chapters so he wants to take those memories those things those events that we have gone through been through maybe we've done it maybe it's been done to us and he wants to take those things those memories maybe they're traumatic And he wants to rewrite those memories to show you where he was in those times because he was there with you. In those dark places, he was there with you. He wants to redeem that time. He wants to give it back to you. And in Hebrews 12, I'm sorry, this is your, this is your time. In Hebrews 12, this is, I'm almost done. Hebrews 12, 1, therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, because you can't rewrite your story, he will, so all you have to do is look at him. Just keep your eyes on him. That's literally all. It's so easy. The author author, get it, and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He wants to rewrite your story, guys, so just look at him. That's really good. I can just sit down now. <clears throat> oh, God is good. <clears throat> How many women were at the um, Breathe Conference in Shell Lake <clears throat> on yesterday and uh, Friday? <clears throat> it was pretty good, if I say so myself. It was really, really good. They, the whole theme was on, on your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions and how important it is that we keep those things into alignment and be led by the Spirit, not by our soul. It's really good. And then they had different breakout sessions on the mind, on the will, and on emotions. And so it's very interesting how much we are led by our soul, right? And how important it is to be led by the spirit. When you're led by the soul, you can pretty much crash everything and burn. When you're led by the spirit of God, then you're on the right path. Amen? Well, how many were here? Um, when did I? I think I'm loud. Um, when I preached on the sloth, you guys remember that? It was in Hebrews chapter 6, I think it was verse 12, where it says this. In the King James Version, it says that, Ye be not slothful, but followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. And I went around and I said that this is what the word sloth means. It means, it doesn't mean lazy. In some translation it says lazy, but it really means this. In the Greek, it says dull. 
lose your drive, passion, and unexcited. You lose your drive, dull, and indifferent. You lose your passion. And it's like a candle that burns, that does not burn as brightly as it once did, but now it's just a flame that's dwindled and a mere flicker. You guys remember that? And I said that I believe that there was this sloth that attached itself to some of the people in the church. This thing that attached itself, the things that we were once passionate about, we've become slothful in. We become indifferent, we become passionless, we become just kind of like, yeah, you know, get up and you just kind of go and you just kind of go along with life. You know, anybody in here know what I'm talking about? The sloth is not your pet. We don't pet the sloth, we get rid of the sloth. He's cute and all, but he's only cute in Zootopia. He's not cute in your heart. Because God needs a church that's going to be passionate about the things he needs you to be passionate about because there's a world that needs to see passion within you so they can be excited about something. How many know they cannot be excited about what's going on out there? That's why the church needs to be the church. It needs to be different. The church needs to quit bickering amongst each other Quit focusing on that kind of garbage and start focusing on there's a lost world going to hell while we're in here picking at each other. We need to align up with the word of God, get passionate again about the things that he's calling us to do and go do it. Amen. Amen? Save people from hell. You know that song, Hell Lost Another One? All right, we want to say that for our friends that are going to hell so that they can sing that song. That's one of my favorite parts, because you know what? It says, hell lost another one, I am free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So every time that we break off chains and areas of our life of bondage, we can sing that song. Not necessarily going to hell, but having hell on earth. You guys get that? It's a lot of Christians experiencing hell on earth instead of heaven on earth. Our desi God's desire for us is to have heaven on earth. Amen? And then I talked about last Saturday night, I talked about Ezekiel. So I talked about the sloth, shaking off that spirit, shaking off that indifference, shaking off the, the passionless, putting back those things, getting enthusiastic again about things that are deep down inside of you, things for, for the kingdom of God. And then on Saturday, I talked about what it took. I talked about Ezekiel, Ezekiel 37, where it talks about the dry bones. How many know that story? It's one of my favorite stories. I can't wait to watch it in heaven on full screen. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Where Ezekiel is caught up and the Lord takes him up and he says, hey, Ezekiel, see these bones in this valley? And what that represents is the church. A, dry, a, a valley of dry bones, right? And then the Lord, the Lord says to Ezekiel, hey, speak to these bones. You guys remember that story? And he spoke to the bones and the bones come all together, create a skeleton. And then all the things come... <laughs> And then they get a whole body. Isn't that amazing? Wouldn't you like to see that? You're watching all these skeletons, which is kind of gross if you think about it, too long. So we won't think about it too long. We're just going to move on. And the bones come together from a word. And they become an army. But they don't become alive until what? See, for you to be alive, you need the Holy Spirit. Amen. You need not only a baptism in the Holy Spirit, but you need an infilling, a refilling daily, minutely, however and often you need it. The Bible says in Ephesians 5.18 to be continually filled with the Holy Spirit. That means not just a one-time thing, but it means a continual every day, every time you need it. When you wake up in the morning, good morning, Holy Spirit, fill me. Without him, we can't do it. We can't do this thing on our own. How many have tried to do it on their own? And how'd that work for you? Yeah, not very well. Not very well at all. But I believe there's an urgency for the church to mature. There's an urgency for us to mature. This conference was so impacted me because it made me realize how often I slip back into emotions and putting everything in a basket according to how I feel. I feel irritated. I f no women ever feel irritated. I feel, I don't feel like 
I'm loved. I don't feel like I'm valued. I don't feel like I'm worthy. I don't feel like I'm qualified. So when I'm led by my feelings, I don't do anything. When I'm led by my feelings, I just sit back and say, and then the devil wins. So when we come into alignment with our emotions, we're coming to alignment with Satan. When we come into it, when we listen to our emotions, when we are um, led by our emotions, we are led by the flesh, we're listening to the enemy. Because the enemy wants to keep you listening to your emotions. There's a devil and there's a God. Just for in case you guys don't know that. There is a devil. And his, his job is to destroy you. His ultimate job is to make sure that you experience hell on earth. If he can't take you to hell, he'll let you have hell here. He'll say, here, see, feel this. Here, somebody ticked you off. Here, now feel this. Here, be offended. Here, take this bitterness. Here, take this garbage. Here, take this. And we walk around defeated Christians with all this stuff because we want to be led by our emotions. The Lord is calling us up higher. He's calling us up higher. He's saying, okay, you know what? I need a church that is filled and full of my Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Do you remember that Jesus guy that died on the cross, was in a grave, three days, probably stunk. You guys remember that guy? The same guy that was born by the Virgin Mary? That guy, Jesus, that lives in your heart, that's your Savior and hopefully your Lord? That guy? You know that spirit that called him up from that grave? The spirit, that spirit, guess where he lives? He lives in you. And why don't we act like it? That is a good word. Because, because God is calling his church higher. He's saying enough is enough. I need, I need you. He needs us to come into alignment, to shake off the sloth, to have the Holy Spirit breathe into us on a daily basis so we can not just stand there as an army like this. Woo, look at that, man. My bones used to be dry. Now they're all got muscles on them and flesh on them, and now I'm all good. No. The Spirit came and breathed in them, and they became a living, mighty army. An army is no good if they stay on base. An army is no good if they don't have what it takes to go out and to fight. You can have all the training in the world, but not use it. It's worthless. Amen? Amen. Yes. <sighs> I, have some water. I need more water. Thank you. It's from all the things from this weekend, man. I'm like, <laughs> you get a bunch of women together. I don't know how many ladies we had, probably 30-something, 30 35 ladies from here, and we, some of us got a hotel and, and um, all had pizza in the breakfast area and, and then tried to sleep. <laughs> there was a hockey team there. Need I say more? No, don't need to say any more. Anyways, that's off the subject. But God is calling up, thank you, he's calling us up higher. Amen? He's calling us to be led by the Spirit of God. Romans 8.14 says, those that are led by the Spirit of God. You remember what the word led means? You guys remember me doing that? I'm going to do it again. The word led means this. It means God puts his hand out like this. Anybody can take my hand. <laughs> you guys are sleeping. Stand back there, Tony, a little bit. Okay, let's try this again. Being led by the Spirit of God means this. It means God puts his hand out like that, and he's walking, and he's leading. Led by the Spirit of God, not the other way around. A lot of, that's good, thanks, Tony. A lot of times, we're leading God, or trying to. We're like, okay, here, God, come on. Come on, grab, come on, let's go. And he's like, um, I'm going that way. So we come into alignment with him. Pastor Bob says this all the time. I want to do what God is blessing, and I, want, I don't want to ask him to bless what I'm doing. It goes a whole lot easier that way. Pastor Jen um, Slater 
yesterday she gave an example of her and her talking about, you know, giving the will to Jesus, you know, letting him drive things, letting him do things. And she gave an example of when her and her husband were driving, she's talking about control, not that women ever have control issues. Just saying if we did, this is probably what it would look like. <clears throat> But anyway, so uh, her husband was driving, and it was, if I'm not mistaken, it was kind of late at night or something, and it was a construction site, as, you know, cones and stuff everywhere. And she looked up, and she thought that he was going to hit a cone. So she grabs the wheel. She grabs the wheel and pulls it, and it puts him into a tailspin. And they just started just going around and around. She said, you know, her husband got him back on, on track. And, man, I was like, how many of us do that with God? How many of us try to take the wheel because we, we think that we know better than him and we turn into a tailspin? But thank you, Jesus, that God is so good and he's a better driver than we could ever imagine. He's like, I'll take you out of that tailspin once more. And he whips us right back around. That's his grace and mercy. That is his grace and mercy. Last Saturday night, I talked about also in 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 7. I'm going to read it in the Amplified Version. We're talking about the church waking up, but not only waking up, but coming into a place of maturity so we can be, it's, all, it's for a reason. It's for a reason, guys. The things that we're experiencing, the things that we experienced last night is amazing. I mean, joy broke out. It was like all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, like, you know, Pastor Bob couldn't hardly talk and... That's probably my, 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 blah, 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 blah. Yeah, God's like, yeah, I'll show you a thing or two. One of my favorite things is when I see my husband messed up because it doesn't happen very often. I mean, I don't mean, I, you know what I mean. I mean that, you know what I mean. Right, okay. I'm not bashing, I'm just saying that when it, when it does, it's like, whoa, God is here. So it's fun to watch him not be able to talk. But those are, those are manifestations of God's goodness and his glory and his presence, and we're going to see more of those. But that's not why we live. That's not why we live. I love those things, and I, am way, I, I want, that is what I want. But why we live and exist in this planet Earth is for that dying world out, world out there. That's why we live. Amen? That is what we live for. 2 Timothy 1, 6 through 7, it says that this, that is why I remind you to stir up. The word stir up is to rekindle the embers, to fan the flame, and to keep burning the gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. Verse 7, for God did not give us the spirit of timidity, but, the po but of power and of love and of calm. Say calm. calm. When you feel anxious, he's given you calmness. Amen? Calm. Where am I? Here I am. Calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. I was reading this this morning, actually, and I was reading that, and I thought, okay, we, we, you know, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind, Right? Okay, but that four, we focus on verse seven, but really it's in verse six that gives us verse seven. It's stirring up the gifts that are in us. See, Timothy, I believe, became very discouraged. He was a pastor of a church in Ephesus. He was a, it was a very large church, and he was young, and I believe that he was being a, probably attacked by con the congregation. You know, that never happens, but possibly if he was. But he was very discouraged, and Paul hears about it, and Paul says, hey, Tim, you need to stir up that gift. He's saying, okay, no, you cannot allow that sloth to attach itself to you because you've got work to do. He says you can't afford to be indifferent. You can't afford to lose your passion. You cannot afford to lose your enthusiasm because the body needs you. The body needs you. So he said, stir up those gifts. And then he reminds them, hey, remember when your grandma and your grandpa and your auntie and your uncle, remember all those gifts? And then remember when I came and I laid my hands on you and I imparted a gift to you? 
So the Lord is saying, hey, do you remember the words that were spoken over you? Do you remember the things that were given to you by prophets or by pastors or by teachers? Do you remember the gifts? Do you remember the dreams that you had at night, the purposes that he placed in your heart? Hey, do you remember those things? Those things are going to keep you from being fearful. Okay, I'm going to say, should I say it again? When we remember and stir up the gifts inside of us, verse 7 just automatically comes. It says, because that will not keep me in fear. You guys get it? Because when I am in alignment with my purpose, it doesn't matter if I might be afraid, that inside of me becomes stronger than the fear in me. Does that make sense? The gifts that were given to me, the promises that were given to me, those things run me instead of the fear. That's what Paul was saying. So when we read that, we read them together. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but I need to stir up the things that were deposited in me. Whether it was by laying on the hands or whether it was you were reading someday, sometime, and you're reading in the word of God and something jumped out at you and you wrote it down and you said, God, you said. Those are the things that we stir back up. When we're discouraged, we bring those things back up. And we say, God, remember. Remember when you spoke over me. Remember that word. I would believe that's what David did. When he was going to get killed by his leaders. Why do they always want to kill the leaders? They always want to kill the the guy, you know. When, remember, his army was going to, his guys, the mighty men of David, they were going to kill him because they came and kidnapped his wife and kids. Everybody's gone. <clears throat> and then David, instead of getting freaked out and led by his emotions, he said, hold up a second. I know where I get my strength from. I'm not going to fear. I'm going to walk away, and I'm going to strengthen myself in the Lord. And I believe that he was there, and he started reminding himself, okay, God, I remember when I was tending sheep. I remember that you helped me kill a bear. I remember that you gave me a direction. I, re- <clears throat> I remember, God. I remember all those things. And then he's like, okay, God, what should I do? See, that's the place that God wants to bring us. Because how many know that we're going to get plummeted by trials? Jesus didn't say, hey, once you receive me, life is like a bed of roses, a box of chocolates. If it was chocolates, it better be good chocolate. He didn't say that. What did he say? <clears throat> Excuse me. He said, be of good cheer. <laughs> Isn't that funny how we always think of the trial? You know, it's like, oh, he said we're going to have trial. No, be of good cheer because I have overcome the world. Yeah. It doesn't matter about your trials. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you're going to have them. Hey, but stir up the gift. Dieter, stir up the gift. I know things are going to come at you. I know you're going to feel discouraged. I know that you're going to feel like you don't, you're not qualified. I know that you're going to feel like everybody's left you, but be of good cheer. Stir up the gift. Remember those words that were spoken over you. Stir up that fire again. That leads us. That spirit leads us. That's when we're growing. That's the church growing in maturity, saying, okay, I feel like this, and I'm about ready to rip some... Anybody ever feel like that? Like, you know, any, yeah, anyways. <clears throat> but we can feel like that. But how many knows, if, how many knows if, we, if we played on those, we'd all be in jail? <laughs> if I were led by my feelings and wanted to smack everybody that irritated me, I would be arrested for domestic something or whatever that is. I don't know. If, (laughs) right? Yeah, assault, that thing. See, but we're, so we can be, so we're not led by those feelings, so we don't have to be led by the other ones to take on offense, to take on bitterness, to take on those things. Right? How many are married? Okay. I don't need to say anything more. (laughs) And all of you still sit here, and your husbands or wives are not buried in the backyard? Right? 
Barb and Bob just got back from Florida. How many months were you guys gone? Three months, four months, six weeks? Almost three months? And they're both alive. <laughs> See? They're not led by their feelings. Right? So we do not have to be led by our emotions or our feelings. Right? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Because there's something for us to do. We come here, we experience the presence of God, we experience the power of God. I couldn't wait to get to church this morning. I came here, my iPad was screwy Louie. I opened it up. All of my notes that I put on this morning were all gone. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm like, okay, um, honey, can you bring my laptop? Because I know it's on my laptop, I think. Not nothing, everything's gone. I'm like, okay, Jesus, technology. I could have been led by my feelings, but I wasn't. It all showed up, so we're all good. So you guys get to hear it. <clears throat> so that word stir is to passionately and rigorously begin again and again and again to stoke and to stir up the gift. See, it doesn't just happen one time. It doesn't just happen one time. We do it again and again and again. We shake off the sloth. We, it's kind of like this. It's like, see, Satan is being noticed. We're like actually aware of his tactics and his schemes, and we don't partner with it anymore. Isn't that amazing? We don't partner with it anymore because partner with that brings death. So now that we see him, we can cut those things off. We can let go of the sloth. We can get rid of the sloth, right? And stir up the gift and be led by the Spirit of God. Amen? For the world, right? You have the Spirit of the living God living inside of you. But you know what? He doesn't want to stay there. He wants to come out. He wants to come out because he wants you to release him to the world. That's what he wants. That's what he call, he's called us to do. And I don't have time to get into my message. That was just a recap of last, the last couple weeks. God has been dealing with me and stirring with me on Ephesians 6, the armor of God, and I'm hoping to be able to do that. And I just was stuck on... In what's number t number ten, verse ten, it says, "And finally, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might." I can't wait to tell you what that means, because it is absolutely will blow your mind. There's a lot of naked Christians out there. There's a lot of naked Christians, because the Bible says to put on the armor of God. And a lot of us get up in the morning, and that's our problem. We get up in the morning, and we just go on with life. We do. We become indifferent, or we become um, passionless in our intimacy with God. It becomes a duty. Get up, and it's like, okay, I'm reading this chapter, and I'm reading this. Doesn't mean God doesn't speak to us. He does, but we become where we don't we don't receive like we used to because it becomes a duty, and not relationship. Does that make sense? He wants relationship. He don't want you, he'd rather you not do it if it, you're doing it out of duty. He wants intimacy. He wants your heart. He wants all of you. You know, he saves you the way you are, but he doesn't want, he don't want, he doesn't want you to stay that way. He wants you to come up higher. Amen? I'm going to have the worship team come back up. So next time I will talk about Ephesians 6.10, I think. But it's really, really good. That word, finally, it means, Paul is saying this. He's saying, you know what? Anybody in here read the book of Ephesians? It's one of my favorite books in the whole world. It's all about identity. It's all about who you are. It's all about him and you and you and me. And, and he's, you know, at the right hand, and we're like at seated at the right hand of the Father. It's all about your identity. But then Paul says this, hey, I want you to forget all of that. That's what that word finally means. It means, hey, Listen, if you get nothing else out of this letter I'm writing to you, I want you to pay close attention to what I'm writing. And then he goes on to say, be strong. 
That word be strong is like power. I can't wait. to. It's just so good to be strong in the Lord. See, here's the thing. When we get it, that the living God lives inside of me, right? He lives inside of me. He came inside of me to dwell in me. He get that power comes up out of me. Anybody ever feel that? Like when you're going to pray for somebody or you're just like, some, once in a while you get that like, whoa, okay. There's that power that's inside of us from the spirit. We're made of three. This is my body. This is from Pastor Jen. We live in a body. We have a? And we are? So I am? I have a? And I live in a? Body. Okay. The spirit of God lives where? In my spirit. He lives in my spirit. And my soul is my mind, will, and emotions. That is my control center. So I have to keep my soul. That's why I believe in, in Psalm 23. He says, what does he say? <laughs> he makes us to lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside the still water. Why? So if he has to restore it, do you think it could be broken? See? See? But when our soul is refreshed and revived and restored, then my spirit man, we come into alignment and no longer is my soul being led by, no longer is my spirit led by my soul, but my spirit is led by my soul. Is led. You guys get what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all good. We got it. You guys got it. I'm not going to go over it again. No more tests. But God wants his church to be the church. And you are an army of the living God. He's given you tools. He's given you tools to win, not to lose. So when you feel like you're losing, when you feel like your battles are too strong, it's a lie. Because he gives you everything you need to win. Gives you a helmet, gives you a sword. Spirit, the shield of Faith. You know that that shield is a shield that wraps all the way around, that the Roman soldiers actually got fitted for their shields. They would go in and they would fit them for their shield because the shield would have to cover from here to their shin all the way around. Isn't that amazing? The shield of faith covers you all the way here. And interesting, it doesn't cover your backside. Because we're never supposed to run away. We're supposed to run towards. David ran toward his giant because David knew who he was. And like Pastor Bob said last night, he knew that he was anointed to be king. He knew that his purpose was not fulfilled and he knew that he couldn't die. So we just got to get that, knowing that. <clears throat> Why don't you guys stand up? it's early you guys are getting out of here 15 minutes before noon well I'm not done yet so <laughs> <clears throat> all right one of the things I love most is I love letting God do what only he can do All right. I right, put your hand on your heart. <clears throat> Close your eyes. All right. Lord, today we recognize the power that you have deposited inside of us. Thank you for choosing us to give you to give your great power. Thank you for choosing us to give your power too. We choose today to honor that power 
and to put it to good use. Today we stand strong in you, and we will not and cannot be shaken. We no longer will be tossed around to and fro in our lives. No longer are we going to be double-minded. No longer are we going to be tossed to and fro. But today we choose to be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. We are hidden in you. We have nothing to fear and everything to gain. We are victors, not losers. We are sons and daughters of a victorious king who has made these things accessible to us. We are more than conquerors. We are the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. We are powerful and mighty in Christ Jesus. Satan, take notice. You are a defeated foe. You are defeated by the work on the cross. And now today, again, defeated because the church is aware of your tactics and no more are we going to be held bondage to you. We know who we are. We know whose we are. We know our lives and we know who lives on the inside of us and who roars on the inside of us. And no longer are we going to keep him inside, but we are letting the lion of the tribe of Judah come out and he's about to give a roar and send the devil fleeing. Come on, Jesus, today we say yes to you. We shake off the sloth. We stir up the gifts. We ask you to fill us to overflowing. We stand strong in you. Every day we will hit repeat and do it again because you, Jesus, are worthy of it all. Come on. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy of it all. Doesn't that feel good? The lion of the tribe of Judah is about to come out. And he's, ever, ever see, uh, what's that show? Chron Chronicles of Narnia. Where Absalom roars. The lion of the tribe of Judah is about to roar. You got Satan who thinks he's cool and all that in a bag of chips. And then you got the lion of the tribe of Judah that lives inside of you. Who shall you fear? Nobody. There's no weapon that is formed against you that can prosper. There is nothing. There is no one that can destroy you. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Come on, church. Let's end with something. End with something good. We don't have a drummer. Dang it. I need a drummer. <clears throat> That's okay. We're good. You guys good? Lord, I thank you. Thank you for these people. I thank you for your army that is rising up putting on their armor. We love you, Jesus. You are so worthy. We thank you for your mercy and your grace and your love unconditional. In Jesus' name. And the body says, amen. All right. Be blessed.